Hey everyone, Scott here to discuss The Accountant, starring Ben Affleck, Gana Kendrick, J.K. Simmons, John Bernthal, and Jeffrey Tambor, and John Lithgow, and directed by Gavin O'Connor. Now, I have to say, I didn't know this at the time that the movie is about an autistic person who has a love of something. Like, for example, like say, Accountant versus an assassin kind of in his professional history, but but I have a little bit of a story to, um, to tell you while we get into this film, in, in the middle of the film, kind of near the end of the film. So let's just get straight into this movie because this is one that I gotta definitely talk about. As a young boy, Christian Wolf is an autistic kid who tries to finish a puzzle and his sister helps him out finding a piece. As an adult, he and as an adult, he's played by Ben Affleck, has a love of be for being an accountant, and as a hobby, is an assassin. And I like the character to the point he plays an autistic man very well, as he's organized and reminds me of myself, whereas the difference is he, I have the love of movies, which is why I'm reviewing them today, but hoping to be a voice actor someday. In Washington, D.C., we meet Agent Mary Beth Medina, who talks about Ray King, who talks with Ray King, played by J.K. Simmons, about an assignment that's big enough for Agent Medina to find the assassin that happens to be Christian Wolf. And I'm not in, only impressed with Ben Affleck as an autistic man, but enthused on how well he plays it as it is sort of reminding me of myself. I won't explain how in that detail, but... And all the other actors in this are tremendous, and J.K. Simmons delivers some very good work in this movie, and I'll get to the other actors in this movie, and particularly particular later, as a boy, Christian and his brother are abused by their father as their mother leaves them, but because she can't torture kids with autism like the father can, which was very realistic, but very sad as we move back to Christian as an adult, shooting some melons and my god the this guy has the patience and is the perfect shot when it comes to being an assassin and it is very and it is a tremendous performance by ben affleck his jailmate and yes he was in jail at one point in his life francis silverberg played by jeffrey tambor is another great acting performance by him and i liked him in this movie very much despite he has very little to do at this point Christian gets an assignment on his accountant side of his living robot at Living Robotics, where the owner is Lamar Blackburn, played by John Lithgow, and meets a couple of people telling him what to do with Lamar's account in the same room as where he and a man and another woman meet and meets Lamar himself while looking at some experiments on what their job is as a company. In Zurich, Switzerland, we get introduced to an assassin named Brax, played by John Bernthal, getting into an important man's car with a gun while getting information from the important man and smashing his face on his wheel of the car. And John Bernthal's character is a badass motherfucker because he's like that in the Punisher TV show and Daredevil Season 2 and hell, many other movies for Christ's sakes. We get back to Christian and he gets a consultant named Dana Cummings played by Anna Kendrick, whom I'm a fan of after the first Pitch Perfect. And she's another good character to watch in this movie, and I like her in this movie. And the plot takes a while to make sense, but when it does, it gets very thrilling, but I'm enjoying the time it takes throughout the movie. For example, a painting called Dogs Playing Poker, as Dina really likes the painting, which will pay off by the end of the movie. Christian figures out the, out the accountant of Lamar's and there are times it goes up and down and figures out and when the money is coming or where the money is coming from and a woman walks in to figure out how much was taken and it takes them overnight, which is amazing because I couldn't work on numbers that quickly if it were me. I mean, I'm not a mathematician by any means, but Lamar's best friend that worked at the building, Ed Chilton, I think is his name, is killed and they erase Christian's work as he was not finished and he tortures himself with loud music and flashing lights 
to calm him down, but doesn't wa work. And the next day, he goes out to shoot melons as he remembers his karate days and how much he bleeds, which is very much an, an intense sequence. Christian is called by out, called on by uh, some assassins, and he shoots them at them to save his clients and beats up the last assassin, and he gets information on who wants him dead, and as it turns out, it's to be Lamar's, to be at Lamar's company as Dana is in danger, which is which wasn't a very intense scene, and Christian saves Dana from the bad guys, and he takes her to the, a trailer he has in his storage garage to get some stuff prepared on what's coming, and as I'm on the edge of my seat for what's going to happen, Christian and Dana, as Christian protects Dana from the bad guys, and I like how this movie is making sense so far. It's a fantastic script, in my opinion. Agent Medina discovers who Christian Wolf is in an accountant, as an accountant, and at the same time, an assassin. As he helps the scariest people in the planet, and I do like the score to this movie as it's very well done in the most intense scenes possible. As Christian thinks of when he was a young boy, Christian beats up bomb bullies with his brother and leaves Dana in the hotel room. Meanwhile, Agent Medina scratch searches Christian's house with Ray as Agent Medina believes in their, this is their guy to arrest, and Brax wires up Lamar's house, and after the FBI search Christian's house, Agent Medina and Ray tell their history, and Ray tells the story of a crime scene he witnessed in the beginning of the movie, but at that time, we didn't see him, and Christian points the gun at him and lets him go, and I have to confess something. When I saw this in theaters for the first time, yes, I saw it in theaters, don't forget about that, there was a guy sitting behind me who had his cell phone bright enough when during this scene, the guy behind him leans forward and says, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but he says, put that fucking phone away, as it scared me as well as some other people around him at the same time. It was hilarious, but the scene was well acted by J.K. Simmons, and the way he tells the story of how Christian lets him go was rather an intense but very good scene that was gratefully shot. And by the way, you should never text while in a movie theater, I'll say, at this point. Christian starts to attack Lamar's property as he has one of Brax's guys as a hostage and shoots the house oil around as Brax sends his men around outside to stop Christian. And Christian shoots every single motherfucker in dead except for Brax who wants to fight Christian and begs him to fight back, but doesn't want, for what reason? Brax is Christian's brother, which is kind of a shocking reveal when I saw it in theaters, in my opinion. Christian does shoot Lamar out of the blue, which was hilarious in a, like, in a oof kind of way. Not that it was intended to be, but I laughed briefly. We learned that the same doctor that wanted to train Christian in life at the beginning of the movie is taking autistic kids in their pro program for a better life as we see Christian's sister is there as she's an older lady as well as her name is Justine and doesn't talk anymore for the last 30 years. Dana goes to the garage storage and remind me, does she ever talk in this movie? Let's go back on top of this. Dana goes to the garage storage as she gets sent to the painting to her apartment that happens to be the dogs playing poker, like they brought up earlier in the film. And Christian goes off to a different life and based on what IMDb and Ben Affleck said, and I'll talk about this in a minute, is there said that is there is that there's going to be a sequel and hopefully there will be one but the climax did feel like there will be a sequel, but it is tremendously shot and acted, in my opinion. I have seen Ben Affleck in a Q&A saying that, and this was my question, was was there going to be a sequel right after the ending of this movie? And he did bring it up without me ever having to ask him. But yeah, he definitely brought it up um, in, in a Q&A that I was at with him one time.
Now it's time for the rating. I'll give this movie a 8.3 out of 10. The acting is tremendous as the characterization is very good and the performances are magnificent. This is a fantastic script that's intense at the same time and I do like the payoff by the end of the day. This movie has some very great shots. This is a good movie to show to an autistic person that has love of, a love of some, for something. And I recommend it to them and anyone who has an autistic any autistic people in their lives and everyone, but don't show it to the kids unless if they're 15 years or older. I'll just say that much. But I would like to thank you guys for joining me, and next time I will be back with The Way Back, that basketball movie with him that he made last year, Ben Affleck, I mean. And until next time, it's time to shoot some bad guys.